some social media campaigns and and certainly highlight, uh, you know, why Norfolk County, you know, what benefits we're bringing to the economy, the Canadian economy as a whole, particularly in the agricultural sector, um, you know, by uh, you know by by receiving by receiving these funds from the feds, and ultimately, I think we have the the perfect spokesperson for it in uh, in Councillor Michelli. I can already envision the videos of Sandwich Internet with uh, Councillor Tom as her spokesperson. So I think there is a real opportunity here for from for Norfolk County. And uh, despite the negative email that we received earlier today, I think. Um, Council needs to really consider what this means. And uh, yeah, we apologize it was last minute. The meeting happened on Friday. Um, we were told the deadline was on the 15th. They need letters of support, as many letters of support as we can get. Those will come from the agricultural sector, from our economic uh, recovery task force, uh, from council itself. And I think anything else that we can do to set our application apart um, will be a very small price to pay. And ultimately that ask that Jason has put in for the 250,000 a year from the uh, Council Strategic Initiative Fund. Of course, if we are unsuccessful in the funding, obviously those monies will not be paid out to Rogers. That's simply uh, if they were to be successful. And at the same time, we can also continue to support any other uh, providers, only one of which I know of, which is quick, which is for a couple of very small projects in Norfolk County, of course, worthwhile as well, um, and certainly provide a letter letters of support to them as well going forward. Thank you. Again, Mayor I just, Chapa. this is amazing. It's, it was incredible. Thank you, Mayor Chapa. I must say, I, I don't think you could have expressed any more accurately my own feelings about this project. So thank you very much. Well said. Before I go to Councillor Martin, I, I see that uh, our clerk, Kevin, uh, has uh, indicated he may need to speak. Kevin, is there something we need to add? Uh, through you, Chair Michelli, um, if it assists Council, I just wanted to take a quick opportunity to note that um, for the we we have one scheduled uh, council meeting between now and March 15th. The one after that is March the 16th, and that would be the uh, approval that we would need of the minutes for any. Um, if you were to defer it, it would be deferred to March 9th, and then the we would be too late on the council meeting on March the 16th. Thank you very much, Kevin. Very valuable information for a council to consider. Thank you. And Councillor Martin. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, yeah, this sounds pretty cool. Uh, I guess my only thoughts were going to, sorry, sorry. Uh, my only thoughts were going to be, um, how does it conflict, if at all, with SWIFT? So that's good to hear. Um, my other question is, are there other, so Mayor Chop mentioned other competitors, are there other competitors right now that are participating in this same UBF application phase? Should we be having a, um, like a, a bit of a, although it's, it's crunch for time, but is this something that should be more of a, um, I want to say RFP, but that's too time consuming, a call for submission to find out, you know, who else is participating in this um, type of uh, initiative? Uh, through, through the chair, we've uh, quick has approached uh, Norfolk County. Uh, like I said, we were providing a letter of recommendation to them, um, and uh, their their project is much smaller and much more defined to a number of uh, communities. Um, and um, you know that's where this one separated because it was all Norfolk, and therefore uh, that made it more reasonable to look at the strategic fund. Um, but at the end of the day, um, we are also um, the social media, if we undertake social media after the applications to provide support, they would be general. They want to be specific to one provider or another. Uh, we will provide those letters support from NSERG and um, Chambers and all that stuff in general uh, supporting broadband. Uh, the only difference with this one was because of the comprehensive nature of it and frankly a much larger financial commitment that's going to be required from the federal government's fund uh, to do this uh, we thought it was much more appropriate that this one have additional consideration um, for council i also kept the wording if you notice uh, with some flexibility in it because i'd hate to be in a situation where if they came back and said well if you put two million bucks in we do the whole county I don't think we want to fine tune ourselves because I think we'd all probably sign up with that check also. So we uh, we put some flexibility into the wording uh, 
to allow uh, to allow us to at least be in the game for as long as we can be. Thank you, Mr. Burgess. Through you, Mr. Chair. Oh, sorry. Marcia Martin, just with your permission, I, I think Mayor Chop just had something she wanted to add to the CAO's comment. So with your permission, I'm going to go to her now. Well, I just wanted to add some, you know, further detail to what Jason said. Uh, I know that uh, Mr. Trevally sent out um, an interesting email today. To be very clear, this isn't an unsolicited proposal. This is Rogers has approached us. Um, they need, as part of the application, they need a letter of support from council. So if there were any other providers out there that were doing a project like this, and correct me if I'm wrong, Jason, they too would have had to have approached us just like Quick did, and we are providing that letter of support. But if there's anybody else out there, this isn't a matter of council is only giving support to Rogers. We would have heard about it from other providers. Um, and again, you know, Rogers approached us. They are submitting the application. They need our support to be able to do that. And what we're looking at in terms of the funding is if you guys really want to set yourselves apart from all of the other municipalities that are applying by demonstrating a commitment from Norfolk County. Thank you, Mayor Chop and Councillor Martin. I'm sorry. Um, no, I, was, I was just sorry. I, the, the mayor is correct. We've only received two requests for a recommendation. And just to be clear to everybody out there, and under any of these programs, such as SWIFT or this one, um, the there has to be provisions for access to other providers to the fiber aid. So, um, so other providers can use it because that's one of the conditions of, of government funding. Uh, so it's open cable to uh, any other provider. So though Rogers might lay lay it, it might be another company that's actually the ISP provider to that home. Thank you, Jason. And just if I could add, and, and that actually will make add even more flexibility to the opportunity that rural households will have. Thank you. Councillor Martin. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, through you to my old, my last question, my only other question would be, could we pass half of this motion to endorse it with a letter of support and have Rogers come and provide a deputation to us and talk more about the application, what's uh, included in it, what it looks like, get some more specific details. Now that we know that we've got this additional time, we can pass a letter of support, start to initiate that coming out from the chambers and various other departments and so on, and um, invite them to come and, and give us that presentation uh, and, and speak to some of our questions and then discuss the funding option at that time? Mr. Um, through, the, through the chair, I'd say that's uh, up to council. Um, I would also suggest, uh, you know, um, that we all circulate the presentation that uh, Rogers has to all of council uh, tomorrow or to later this evening. Um, we can request that they, um, uh, that they come up. I just don't. I just want to make sure that you know that whatever we do on this, it's very positive. That we're not, um, you know, that we're not looking. At, you know, I don't want to because anything that we do on this is going to create media, and, and that's going to be open for comment by anyone who's evaluating it. So I just want to make sure that if we're putting this forward, we actually are putting our best foot forward, um, and not getting bogged down into something that would be detrimental to the uh, application. But I will certainly uh, request uh, for Rogers for con for that consideration. Uh, yeah, and I, I think further to that, that it could be a very good news story where council members learn a considerable bit, bit more information and it's shared through the media locally. So I, I would be interested in that before making any financial contribution to it. It's not that I don't support it. It's just, again, I, I, we haven't had this information uh, for very long not that you have either, but uh, it would be good to, to find out additional information. And I think we'd be able to find some um, really cool things and, and share it with the public and learn more about it and then discuss a financial contribution at that point. But I would be in full support of endorsing it with letters letters of support today. Thank Thanks. you, Councillor Martin, Mayor Chaw. Yeah, I think that at the end of the day, though, that this should be part of Roger's application on the 15th. So we can extend the invitation. Again, the presentation will be provided to all of council. You can see exactly where they're planning on laying cable. You can see exactly that they're looking at providing internet service to 9,100 homes. Um, I, Jason could attest, I think the meeting lasted, what, maybe 15, 20 minutes. It wasn't a long meeting at all. Um, this is their plan. This is what they're willing to do for us. 
I actually, you know, again, not a single dollar will come out of Norfolk County unless they are successful in this application. And you don't want this going with the application after the fact. If you want to have the if you want to have the biggest chance at this, it's to put your best foot forward in your letter of support, which says, hey, Norfolk County Council is you know, willing to commit uh, X amount uh, waive permit fees, et cetera. If you were to be successful in bringing, uh, you know, internet to all of the 9,100 uh, unserviced homes. So while I appreciate Mr. Travalli's, uh, you know, letter, um, I think it is way off base. And I think that it would be a great disservice to the citizens of Norfolk County uh, to not put our best foot forward, to bring this forward at the next council meeting and if Rogers is able to attend that council meeting, great. If not, make a decision, put your name to it. And if you don't want to support it, well, don't support it. But I think it's important that we move forward with it. Point of personal privilege, you keep referencing Mr. Trevally. These are my concerns based on the lack of information I have had with this report. So I am in support of this. This sounds fabulous. I, there's not a bad bone in my body about this. However, we haven't set our budget yet. We have been debating council initiative reserve. I would just appreciate additional information before I move the latter part of the motion is all I'm saying from my personal perspective. And Mr. Chair, I am referencing the letter because it was sent to both newspapers and this is an incredibly good news story for Norfolk County. And I don't want anything to jeopardize a good news. This is amazing. This is, like I said, knock me off my chair wow that rogers is putting this forward this application on our behalf and uh council should be ecstatic about that thank you mayor chop and i have several councillors uh in order here so i'll begin with councillor rabbits thank you and through you um you know i think my struggle with it is identifying a funding source so early and we do have a um you know, direction provided by council for terms of reference for this fund. And we haven't yet received that report. And so you procedurally, I'm wondering if it isn't uh, too early to identify a funding source, but still commit to the $1 million, um, you know, to have a successful application, $250,000 year over year, does Rogers require us to provide a funding source at this juncture? And so to have this in a staff report before we've had another report that I believe we're expecting, I almost wonder if it's a matter of reconsideration. Okay. But I'm also wondering, you know, what, what, what is the sensitive nature of identifying a funding source at this venture? Um, you know, we're well over a hundred million dollar corporation. Uh, we've spent uh, cash flow on acquiring significant land purchase with the hub. I'm, I'm having trouble distinguishing how, how different a proposal like this is um, to commit to it in principle, to provide a letter of support, and let us uh, have a, a discussion about the funding source, um, you know, at, at, a, at a later date when we're prepared to have that, that conversation. It does feel quite rushed. Uh, I'm in support of the project and, and in fact, quite incite, excited about it. But to identify the, the Council of Strategic Initiative Reserve, um, you know, I, I want to know if is that necessary? Uh, through the through the chair, yeah, Council can approve it with a funding source to be identified uh, subsequent with a potential budget amendment. Um, you know, and you know, that's that's fine. Uh, and it'd be contingent the budget amendment would be contingent upon receiving uh, confirmation from Rogers that um, you know that they were successful um, and uh, but you know at, at that point in time you would just be able you would have to restrict some of the funding uh, you couldn't spend out uh, the most easily identifiable funding source so it'd be tough for council to spend a million dollars someplace else and then Rogers out of that fund and then Rogers says we're successful give you 250 and there's no place to pull it from uh, but yes, no, the, the councillor is right. We can do it and declare and uh, do a budget amendment later in the in the year. Thank you, Jason. I'm going to Councillor Columbus, please. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And uh, yes, I totally support uh, enhancing broadband connection. I don't know if you are aware of it, but in the north part of the county here, 
when uh, Silo sold out to Explorenet, we basically have very, very bad connections for our farming operations. And every week I get uh, calls from families that have school children can't get their internet connections. So it's pretty serious out there. And uh, it's the only way that we need today to communicate. And uh, Mayor Chop mentioned that she received this in the middle of last week. I happened to call Brent Wallace today to find out what he knew about this proposal. And he said he didn't know anything about it. He didn't even see the report. So, Mr. Burgess, how come uh, our IT director wasn't involved in these discussions? I know I'm being pretty direct, but I think I have to be. He should be. I mean, he's involved with SWIFT, and I don't know how uh, Councilor Michelli was informed about it, but uh, I think he should have been part of these 15-minute discussions as well. But for our IT director not to have been invited, didn't even know this report was out today when I informed him. You know, to me, it's just not right, sir. If you could comment on that, please. Sure. Um, yeah, thank you through the chair in, in, in perfect world. Um, yeah, we would have had input from Brent. Uh, to be fair, um, the request from Rogers was to the mayor. The mayor looped me in uh, essentially because we had another meeting that ran over. Um, so I jumped on the Rogers call. So I wouldn't have known about it. Uh, and the call was Friday at three, I think it was. Um, I did the report on, you know, on the weekend uh, to get it uh, out, you know, on Monday. Um, and um, um, Shelly Darlington, who oversees IT, was uh, uh, QA'd the report or was a second reviewer on that report. So Brent's boss was aware of it. Um, one of us should have clued in to get Brent's uh, input on it. Um, but, um, you know, that's what happens when um, we're flying in. And Brent's, you know, to Brent's uh, thing, you know, he doesn't always read all the uh, uh, reports that go to council um, because he's very busy doing other things. So, um, so, you know, that's just one of those things because of the speed, um, you know, the speed of this, um, uh, of the process. Mr. Chair, if I can further elaborate on that, uh, at uh, 4.47 on February the 4th, which was Thursday, uh, I received the reply back from uh, Jody Parps. Thank you for response and my apologies on the rushed meeting request. Would tomorrow at noon be okay? And Again, I had no idea really what this was about at that point in time. And it worked out that I said to Jason, I said, hey, can you jump on this meeting with me? I'm not even really sure what it's about. So, you know, we did our best to get to pull it together. And the reason they were asking for a rushed meeting was, again, because the applications were going to be due on February the 15th. And they needed, obviously, the letter of support to go along with it. Thank you, Mayor Chop. As you said, it's an amazing opportunity. I agree. Thank you. Councillor Michelle, if I can just elaborate one more point on the funding source. Um, if it's not coming out of the council strategic, I can't think of anything more strategic for Norfolk County, especially when it was the number one issue identified by our economic recovery task force. The criticism before was that it was, um, you know, not council recommendations and they were staff recommendations. Uh, and that was a little bit in part why uh, I contacted Councillor Michelli immediately after the, the meeting. And, and it wasn't just, you know, choosing Councillor Michelli over Brandt was because of Councillor Michelli's involvement with SWIFT uh, and being such a huge advocate for Norfolk County for bringing broadband to, to all of Norfolk. Um, so it was an effort to loop him in. And again, you know, we've had all these debates recently with the Council Strategic Initiative Fund, and I just can't think if we don't do it through that fund, I'm not sure what other funding source we're looking at. It would be adding a quarter percentage point on the levy. Um, and this is the perfect, um, you know, the perfect use for a fund that's supposed to be strategic. And this is furthering a strategic goal for Norfolk County, as identified not only by council, but by our outside business uh, community that hasn't been engaged in that process. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I'll go to Councillor Van Passen now. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, you might recognize where I'm sitting in lovely downtown Simcoe because living in the rustic countryside, I don't have good enough internet service 
that I could join you on this uh, type of meeting. So I, I support this project 100%. Um, I don't understand what the big discussion is over um, um, use of the council initiative reserve to sort of make a, an application pop to try to get funding from the government to look after this. I thought that's the kind of thing that reserve is for. It's when something new comes up that's unbudgeted that you had a source to draw upon to fund things that come in at last minute. Um, maybe one of the problems with this county over the years is when they were willing to spend money, they didn't identify a source up front. And here we're trying to do that. We're going to support a great project. We didn't know it was coming. Luckily, we've got money tucked away just in case something like this comes along. And we're going to tell everybody where that money is going to come from. And the benefits are going to come later on um, to the entire county of Norfolk um, and, and allow people to access the Internet. I read an article earlier today, I, I believe in The Reformer, that... Um, the greatest uh, need for economic improvement after COVID in southwestern Ontario is based on high-speed internet and natural gas. And we get uh, both of those things going here in 2021. That puts us one step ahead of everybody else. And uh, maybe we'll get our economy back on track quicker than everyone else. Um, it's coming up on, on uh, uh, Family Day weekend. And I've invited, been invited to go uh, ice fishing with my grandsons. And one thing I know about trying to catch something, you got to put a little bait on the hook before you get the big one. So uh, I, I fully support the recommendation that staff has put forward here. Thank you, Councillor Van Passen. Councillor Taylor. Yeah, I think after what uh, Chris just said, I can't put much more support than that behind this. I mean, uh, I, well, me personally, I think being able to say that the the funding source is the Council Strategic <clears throat> Initiative Reserve on their application is going to add more strength to it, saying, hey, we are so behind this. I, I, I can't stress that enough that I think it is the best source. Also, I want them going in with that application, like having everything approved. I don't want there to be any questions about it. I, I This is an amazing opportunity. So, yeah. Thank you, Councillor Taylor. Councillor Huffman. Thank you, Chair Michelle. I don't have too much more to add. Um, add. I think it, the point's been beleaguered. This is a, a great opportunity for Norfolk County and uh, looking forward to seeing where this uh, initiative takes us. Thank you. And Councillor Martin. Sorry, Mr. Chair, I think you might have skipped Councillor um, Rabbits, but I, I'll just make my point very quickly. I'm sorry, I was going to him next. I wasn't sure which of you two. I, he definitely I had, beat me, but I'll, I'll just... I had, I'll just I had seven him. hands raised, and I... Well, you're doing okay. a great job. Uh, I guess I just want to clarify that my, you know, my concern is not actually the funding source or that's not the concern. It's it's not a worry for me that, that we're debating that aspect of it. I just don't feel like I quite know enough about it to give it that stamp of approval and say, yes, I want to give it this much money for this many years from this account. I just simply would like to hear a little bit more from them. Maybe we can even do, um, if, they, if they have the time and they're interested, a few separate meetings with council members just virtually this week so we don't have quorum, get the information, have a presentation, ask some questions, and then come the next council meeting next Tuesday, decide there on, on the funding source. Like I said, in support, um, not really debating the use of the, the fund or whatnot. I just don't feel like I have um, enough information in front of me right now that I want to give it uh, past that latter part of the motion with the funding at this time. It's not that I am opposed to it. I think there's probably a lot of merit in beefing up the application in, in this exact way. Um, I just don't know enough about it. I'm not. I'm not an expert at that. So wanted to clarify, not to not the funding source that is of concern to me. Just looking for some more um, information in general. Councillor Roberts. Uh, thank you, and through you, uh, this will be my final time speaking uh, to the matter. Um, you know, I did bring up this, the funding source as uh, you know. I just I just feel that um, I do need to. 
find out more about, you know, the long-term plan for this. So it's four years, $250,000 commitment that leads into another term of council, assuming they still have a council initiative reserve fund. Um, so we're going to continue with our policy of topping it up to a million dollars. You know, I believe that's the recommend or that's the direction staff are, are operating under. We haven't changed um, this policy or established a terms of reference. And so, you know, that's that's really kind of the crux of my my hang up, I guess, or why I'm asking you about the source of the funding. Um, you know, I'm looking for acknowledgement that this is going to pass into another term of council. I want to ensure that that reserve is established and those monies are there once we're successful uh, in this application. Ultimately, I'm, vo I'm voting in favor of this, folks, but um, I think it, it, it does feel a bit rushed and it is. Um, which is fine. We need to make decisions um, quickly sometimes when opportunities present themselves. You know, I'm coming around. Uh, but but to that point, um, you know, there needs to be a debrief, there needs to be some follow-up afterwards. So when we're having our discussion about the Initiative Reserve Fund, uh, we need to acknowledge that we've, we've locked ourselves in a million dollars over four years if this, if this decision is ultimately successful. Um, and that needs to become part of those terms of reference for that account, right? Um, if, if we are going to be identifying a funding source and not leaving it gray or open for drawing from a depleted reserve, uh, we need to enshrine and make sure those monies are there. Because uh, ultimately, we're, we're going to have a changing of the guard one day. Um, there's going to be another election. And, and who knows what that future council will do. I think it's part you know, of our strategy and our mandate here to, um, you know, set them up better than, than sort of we had, um, whether they, those members be present today or um, watching our meeting today. Uh, I think that's part of our strategic um, direction, part of our strategic plan, right? And, you know, I'm having a recommendation. I didn't, I didn't even hear some of that language, you know, being alluded to. So that 15 minute presentation that I was not privy to, this council wasn't part of, absolutely. It'd be nice to have that forthcoming in a future, you know, presentation. Um, sorry for being so long winded tonight, but you know, this is important. We're talking about a million dollars here, uh, over four years. And I just want to make sure that, you know, if we're doing this, the monies are there, um, <clears throat> when maybe I might not be, or, or this council may not be right. Mayor Chuck. Mr. Chair, um, I think there's a piece that's being missed here. This is, again, this is monies that are only going out if we are successful in the funding application. So this isn't handcuffing future councils. Uh, I asked, uh, you can go online. I think they're anticipating springtime as being a decision um, by the feds as to who will be the successful recipients. Uh, this isn't a long time horizon. It's a very short time horizon to get an answer from them. Uh, and they said it, you know, depending on the volume of applications, it could go a little bit further. Um, the likelihood of us finding something to use the million that's in there between now and then, of course, all of this council knows if we made that commitment, there's not even necessarily a commitment to have to draw from future monies from future council because the million is sitting there. So at the time, if you wish to dedicate the entire million that's already in that reserve account as being allocated to paying that, you would be able to do that. So it's not handcuffing future councils. I respectfully would suggest that or, or ask that, you know, I don't, I, I think council needs to demonstrate complete support for this. Um, and now, and if you wish to pull the item next week, I'll certainly will reach out to Rogers. I'm sure they will have no problem either doing a presentation at council next Tuesday or alternatively uh, reaching out to counselors individually. And if after between now and next Tuesday or after their presentation next Tuesday, you want to pull away from the staff recommended motion, well, that's that's fine. But I think, you know, a million dollars is what the proposal is to bring rural inter internet to 9,100, you know, unserviced homes in Norfolk County right to their doorstep. And I don't even think that this should be a question for, uh, that is the best million dollars you will ever spend if that made us successful in getting that application, hands down. Thank you, Mayor Chubb. Councillor Martin. Oh, thank you, Mr. Chair. I didn't recognize I still had my hand up, but I, I will take advantage of this. I think we are still, we can still provide full support and endorsing this and sending the letter and then council members can 
find out a little bit more about the program and then follow up with an endorsement on the funding. I do want to support this as a united front unanimously. I think that's a that Mayor Chop's suggestion is a great suggestion, but as it sits right now, I will not be endorsing spending the million dollars. So I would respectfully ask that that be separated from the motion. We find out more information and then vote on that. That would make me feel a lot better about the use of that money. Yeah, sorry, yeah. Councilor Michelle, I didn't realize my video had, had sorry. Up. Did it, You're on. Yeah, no, I, I think Councillor Taylor nailed it on the head. What a better way to communicate that you have, you know, a relatively young council. Hey, we're moving forward in Norfolk County. This is to communicate that the funding is even coming from the Strategic Initiative Fund. I think, Councillor Michelle, you will recall that I said the very same thing to you the other day. That is part of the story itself. And uh, I would like to move the motion with the staff recommendation as printed. If it fails, Councillor Martin, you can move it for just a letter of support. That's fine. If you want to pull the motion next week, I will continue to reach out to Rogers. I will get Rogers to speak to each of the council members. And if you want to revisit the motion next week, that's at council. But I am putting the motion as recommended on the floor. And I stand by it 1 million percent um, that this has the opportunity to be a real game changer for Norfolk County. And I, I don't even see how this is, you know, even a contentious issue. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I do believe Councillor Taylor is our seconder. And is there any more debate or discussion? Councillor Martin. Yeah, so the motion's on the floor. That's great. Um, support the internet. Don't support the use of the money. Look forward to speaking forward to Rogers and learning more. And uh, Mayor Chop, it's easy for you to say that because you have been privy to that 15 minute conversation. That's all I'm asking for before use of the money. So uh, that's my position. I won't be supporting the motion in full. I do support the notion of internet in Norfolk County. Thank you. Well, our CAO was privy to the conversation and has the highest guy of the corporation that uh, is supporting it and uh, also agrees on the opportunity that this could potentially provide. In fact, some of the ideas with waiving the permit fees, I mean, that's, you know, that's why we're paying Jason who came up with that. What a great idea. Thank you, Jason. Through you, Mr. Chair, it's not about who is privy to the report and whose opinion I trust more. It's just simply that I have to represent my constituents when I vote and I am not privy to that information. That is not a, a dig to you or staff. I'm just, that's my personal preference to have that information come to me firsthand. Any other discussion or debate from committee? Seeing none, we will uh, have the motion. Kevin, would you read this motion for us, please? Certainly. Um, that staff report CAO 21-09 regarding the council strategic fund be received as information and that the mayor will provide a letter of support for Rogers Communications Inc's proposal and that if Rogers Communications Inc's proposal is approved, Norfolk County will waive all permit fees and provide a minimum of $1 million in financial contribution over a four-year period, and further that the proposal from Rogers Communications, Inc. Be considered, an, sorry, be considered an exclusion as outlined in Norfolk County Purchasing Policy ECS 02 Section 14.1 as the supplies and or services are provided by or for utilities. Thank you very much. I believe I'm going to request a recorded vote unless there's a member who objects to that. Councillor Huffman. Thank you, Chair Michelle. I know we kind of have done them earlier, but this is CIC and we don't do recorded votes in, in CIC. So uh, I think we've kind of broken protocol earlier tonight and I, I don't know why we have to keep having recorded votes. Okay, I, I think we had established that earlier, Councillor Huffman, that the virtual meetings sometimes require that for, for clarity and certainty. But if, if you're objecting to, uh, to my suggestion, uh, we could put, put that to a vote if you'd prefer. Um, is uh, we a content then, Kevin, if you'll proceed? Okay, so we're proceeding with the recorded votes. Um, beginning with Councillor Rabbits. Yes. 
Councillor Columbus. No. Councillor Martin. No. Councillor Van Passen. Yes. Councillor Huffman. Yes. Councillor uh, Taylor. Yes. Mayor Chop. It's a no brainer. Yes. And Chair Michelli. Yes. Motion carries six to two. Councillor Rabbits. Thank you through you. Um, it, it's just one question that I forgot to ask, honestly, early on is I, I was hoping for maybe some feedback from our telecommunications advisory committee or if we could have some sort of response from, from that group or have them solicited. I really appreciate that. It's got a staff direction. Yeah, that's, that's a very good suggestion, Councillor Rabbits. Again, all of this information coming very recently. So there are there are several parties that, that probably should be informed. And we will move on now to, uh, there is a notice of motion. Uh, we have one from Councillor Taylor uh, regarding the uh, Tourism and Economic Development Advisory Board appointment. Councillor Taylor, do you wish to introduce the motion to be presented at next week's council meeting? Uh, yes, please. And if I could just speak to this uh, quickly, that'd be nice as well. Go ahead. Um, yeah, so Cindy's expression of interest uh, didn't cross Kevin's desk until after he had prepared our January 12th closed session report. Um, she is a valued member of the TDAB committee and uh, staff certainly would like to recommend Cindy remain as a member. And um, beyond that, Kevin, if there's anything else you'd like to add, go for it. Um, I think it's a no brainer, she's awesome. Uh, through you, Chair Michelli, um, the other component of um, Councillor Taylor's um, motion is a housekeeping item to make sure that we have the one-time exemption to the terms of reference, which um, state the maximum number of um, members on TDAB. But uh, with that motion, there will be the one-time exemption for the two-year period. Thank you. And so, Kevin, if what what is our next step? Just quickly scrolling here. Sorry. Um, sorry. Our next step would be um, item. Uh, well, to to enter into um, closed session for item ten A. Oh yes, I'm sorry. Um, we we are. Complete with uh, Councillor Taylor's notice of motion? Okay. Yep. So uh, then we will uh, need to, um, I, I think, Kevin, if I am not mistaken, uh, can we move to general announcements before we do that? Yeah, correct. Sorry, I was just, uh, I was on the okay. other page. That, that, okay, I'm sorry. That's fine. Um, I certainly understand that. Uh, are there any general announcements from committee? Mayor Chaw. Uh, just a couple of comments. Uh, Jason sent out an email to council uh, regarding the phone call uh, with General Hillier uh, today for um, the um, for all of the the uh, mayors of the 444 municipalities. Um, they, um, you know, essentially uh, the province is moving through their stages. We're very lucky here in Haldeman and Norfolk to have vaccinated. Um, and Marlene, you can correct me if I say anything wrong, um, but all of our long-term care um, and uh, retirement facilities, um, you know, the, we there's 34 health districts in the province, and uh, we're certainly learning that that has not occurred in, in all 34 districts. So uh, a giant, uh, you know, thank you to all of our, our public health staff and paramedics 
um, for being able to accomplish that task. Um, we have had several inquiries from uh, the older population that are wondering at what point in time uh, they will uh, be contacted for their immunizations. The province uh, still has a um, limited number of vaccines. Um, they are looking at, I believe, uh, the second phase coming on uh, the beginning of April. And at that point, um, they will be moving into the over 80 category. Uh, and I know our public uh, health team is working in collaboration um, with the De Delhi um, Medical uh, Center, as well as um, the other local physicians. And maybe Marlene, I might give you an opportunity to kind of add on into there, just because we are starting to get a number of emails of people inquiring uh, when they're gonna be contacted. Uh, thank you, Madam uh, Chair, or Madam Mayor. Um, uh, we have uh, been successful in uh, vaccinating all of the residents at long-term care in all of our retirement homes. And we're doing actually second doses this week. And we anticipate that we'll have all of the residents completed uh, by uh, the end of this week with their second dose. We also, um, when we were able to, we did um, also vaccinate a small subset of the staff in long-term care and retirement homes, uh, but subsequently the ministry and um, the general have requested that that stop. And so we uh, will be doing that on day 35, which should start sometime next week. Um, as you've stated, uh, we are not able to move forward at this time until we get ministerial and general consent. Uh, so we are waiting for that. We are optimistic that we'll get that very shortly. Um, but at this point in time, we do have to hold. We are anticipating uh, more vaccine doses um, in the coming weeks um, prior to April. Um, and then once we have that, it may be to do uh, some of our um, health care providers, uh, the second doses, um, the health care providers that haven't even had their initial doses. And then it will um, be initiated into uh, the community living um, population. Uh, we are very grateful. We do have a, a health sector partnership task force uh, locally across Haldeman Norfolk and we are working with the Delhi family health team the Haldeman fa family health team both of our EMS partners and um, our hospital partners uh, to mobilize multiple clinics uh, we are ready to mobilize once we get that direction um, to be able to vaccinate um, the population once it's all available so as soon as it's available we will proceed and thank you for the opportunity and I'm happy to answer any further questions thanks very much Marlene You're on mute, Tom. Thanks, Mayor Uh Jason Godby, I see you have your hand raised. Is there something you need to put in? Uh, yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, just very quickly, I wanted to uh, just tell everyone verbally here, I'm not sure if, how far the message has gotten out uh, with regards to the interim water supply study. Those who are looking for it, uh, there is a copy of the staff reports. There's a copy of the report itself, as well as a presentation from WSP, all available online, Norfolk County's website. Uh, navigate to living, then underwater and wastewater. On the right-hand side, you'll see the interurban water supply, and all that information is there. And that's all I had to say. Thank you all very much. Have a good night. Thank you, Jason. Good night. Councillor Taylor. Thank you, Councillor Michelli. Oh, yeah. um, just an update regarding uh, Indwell, um, the Dogwood Suites downtown. Uh, I've had a few inquiries. Uh, people think it, you know, it's not coming along as fast as people would thought would have thought. So uh, I put out a couple feelers. They uh, they've run into uh, problem after problem. Uh, first, the steel beams and the had to get were rotted out at the bottom, so they had to you know replace that, and then. They realized the the roof was as damaged as it was, so they had to tear that down, which allowed for them to uh, put the th additional third story on. And uh, the most recent one, when they were looking to sink some of their uh, the elevator mechanics uh, into the basement, they found the river that runs under the uh, building. So they had to seal that up and redraw where the elevator goes, but they uh, they certainly are still planning on this fall being open. Uh, they are still on track for that, and the exterior is currently going up. I watch it from across the street every day, and 
it certainly is going up. So all the best luck to him for hopefully the roadblocks stop. Thank you, Councillor Taylor. That's very encouraging. Councillor Columbus. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. A couple things here. Uh, during the course of this uh, meeting, I had a communication from uh, one of the members that we discussed about uh, whether we should be appointing somebody to Ward 2 seat or whether it should go to election. And apparently, uh, this is to the deputy clerk, apparently they sent letters in to uh, council that were to be distributed for this meeting about uh, what their thoughts were as to whether it should be an appointment or election. And I understand they were supporting the move to have actually a, uh, an appointment. Kevin, uh, do you have any information on that? Um, so we typically um, put in on the info packs all the communications we receive from the public, and that runs on a uh, Wednesday to Thursday. Uh, sorry, a Thursday to Wednesday cycle um, so that we can get it on. Um, if we miss it, my apologies. Um, but uh, if it came in late, we might have missed it. And uh, the the comments could have, uh, the report went out on Friday. So I'm suspecting that we received those correspondence over the weekend and it will be included in next week's info pack. Yes, I was told it was actually sent to clerk. So, um to the clerk's file. So anyway, I uh, I don't know what the letter said or anything, but they were suggesting that way they would prefer appointment rather than spending the money on an election. Um, the other thing, uh, I just got a, a message here while we're sitting here. The offshore program with respect to vaccinations, uh, this is for Ms. Miranda. Is there any move as to how that will be handled? These workers will be coming in shortly. And are they go, are they to be vaccinated, Marlene? So uh, through the chair, at this point, we do not have that direction. We continue to advocate for them to be um, tested before arrival uh, to uh, get support from the federal government uh, for the initial isolation period um, and to have them vaccinated. But at this point, there is no further direction, but staff will continue to do so. Thank you for that update. Yeah. Thank you, and uh, I don't see any other general announcements. I just have one of my own. I want to thank uh, Brent Wallace and uh, the IT department and our staff for uh, helping me uh, monitor and manage this virtual meeting. It's my first time going through this, actually, and I really appreciated their help. They were of tremendous uh, uh, guidance and encouragement to me, uh, going walking through a few exercises to make this happen. So. I want to I want to just thank them for all their support uh, to this council and to myself personally. Thank you. Um, we uh, we do have one in camera item that we will be um, dealing with, and uh, it is uh, CAO twenty one dash ten regarding the uh, Lynn Street Elipad appeal. Uh, I will need a motion to move into closed session. Uh, Paul, I, I will Is have to read out the entire uh, motion. For, I'm sorry. Um, but uh, we can, if we can get a mover in a second, or I'll read it out and then. Um, okay, I have Councillor Rabbits moving and Councillor Martin seconding. Okay. So uh, that. Committee and Council enter closed session at 8.05 p.m. to address the following matters. CAO 21-10, read 24 Lynn Street LPAT appeal. Pursuant to sections 239, 2E and F of the Municipal Act 2001, as the subject matter pertains to litigation or potential litigation, including matters before administrative tribunals involving the municipality or local board and advice that is subject to solicitor client privilege, including communications necessary for that purpose. And we have a motion to that effect. Any discussion, Councillor Martin? We have, do I have a motion and a seconder for this, Kevin? I do, I have Councillor Martin, Mayor Chop, 
All those in favor? Thank you, that is carried. We will now move into closed session for members of the public. Uh, we have no other uh, public agenda items uh, when we return uh, other than to uh, come back out to adjourn this meeting. For your information. I've, uh, oh. May I just request a quick five minute uh, break before we start? I, I believe that would be appropriate. Thank you very much. Uh, what an excellent suggestion, Councillor Martin. And Who Mr. Chair, I've uh, declared an interest a conflict on this one. Um, do you want me to stick around for adjournment or do you think you got it? <laughs> uh, Councillor Taylor, I think we have this. Uh, you you have a you have a, a good evening and uh, we will see you soon. Absolutely. Thank Take care guys. Thank you. Bye bye. And we will take a five minute. Okay.
uh, by reconvening an open session. So, Kevin, do we need a motion to do that? I believe we have Mayor Chop making the motion, seconded by Councillor Rabbits. All those in favor? Thank you. And Kevin, do I need to also have the information received uh, by committee? Uh, yeah, you just need to uh, state that we provided direction. But I'm asking if we need, okay, so we're going to make the motion to receive the staff no. um, report. So, sorry, Councillor Michelli. Um, we don't have to do a motion. Um, the motion is uh, complete and closed. So what we what we do is we have as we inform the public that we have directed uh, or the council and committee has directed um, the uh, county solicitor, and that's that's essentially it. Thank you. So when when can we do that? Right now? Yeah. Yeah. All right. So Kevin, who get who's making that motion? Councillor so, Michelli, it's no motion. Cam, Kevin's just indicated for the public we've provided direction to our solicitor okay. in closed so session. That's, that's all. Now we just need to move on to a motion to adjourn. Okay. Then I will ask for a motion to adjourn. And that is Mayor Chop, seconded by Councillor Huffman. She seems very happy. Um, all in favor? Thank you very much. This council and committee meeting is adjourned. Thank you, everybody. Good job. Thank, Thank you, you uh, council.